this video, we're going to start a new series on ray tracing. Hardware for real-time ray tracing has been available for about two years now. And with the release of the PS5 and Xbox Series X this fall, it will begin to be more common in games. So now's a good time to learn what ray tracing is and how to use it. In today's video, we're going to go over these topics. First, we're going to talk about what ray tracing is and how it works. Then we're going to compare it with the most popular rendering technique used today called rasterization. Next, we'll go over the method that Unreal is using for ray tracing. It's a hybrid approach that uses both rasterization and ray tracing. And finally, we'll cover how ray tracing works for shadows, ambient occlusion, reflection, and global illumination. In future videos in the series, I'll go over how these things apply specifically in Unreal, but today we're going to go over the basics. And I hope you'll be patient while I lay this foundation of explanation so that you'll be able to understand things better when we jump in and start applying these uh, in Unreal. So let's start out today talking about what ray tracing is. At its most basic level, ray tracing means casting rays into the scene to see what they hit. Rays are imaginary straight lines that have an origin and a direction. If the rays hit something in the scene, we can use the hit location and surface properties of the object we hit to help us shade and light the scene. Let's go over the process one step at a time. Ray tracing in a scene is done one pixel at a time. For each pixel, we cast a ray from the camera through that pixel and into the scene. If the ray intersects with an object, we figure out the color at the point where the ray hit. That color then becomes the color of the pixel on the screen. A lot of math is required to detect ray object intersections and to calculate color at the hit locations. If we're calculating shadows, reflections, or ambient occlusion, additional rays must be cast out from the original ray hit location. If those rays hit objects, more rays are cast from those locations as well. So sometimes many thousands of rays can be generated just to calculate the color of a single pixel. This is why ray tracing is so expensive. Most game engines use a rendering technique called rasterization. Rasterization begins with 3D objects. It projects the object triangles from 3D space into the 2D space of the screen and then splits those triangles up into pixels. With ray tracing, it's the other way around. We begin with the pixels and calculate their color by casting rays into the scene and seeing what they hit. Rasterization is very fast to render, but less realistic. Ray tracing, on the other hand, is slow because of how much math is involved, but the results can be ultra-realistic. Rasterization uses hacks like reflection volumes, baked lighting, cascaded shadow maps, and screen space ambient occlusion to mimic the appearance of light, while ray tracing simulates real light behavior with no hacks. Making rasterization look realistic requires a ton of effort by the developers to set up and create all those hacks, while ray tracing can look amazing and basically just needs to be turned on. Tracing rays is expensive. In order to do it in real time for a game, we have to find a way to reduce the number of rays required to draw each pixel. Unreal and other game engines use a hybrid approach using both rasterization and ray tracing together. Diffuse lighting is calculated entirely with rasterization. Blurry reflections are done, with, are done with rasterization, while smooth, sharp reflections are done with ray tracing. Ambient occlusion can be done in screen space or with ray tracing depending on the budget. Shadows can be ray traced, but only the most important lights are traced to save on performance. Global illumination can be computed with ray tracing, but if it is, you usually don't have any budget time left for anything else to be ray traced. So you have to choose which effects to ray trace and which to use raster rendering. 
As ray tracing hardware becomes more powerful, the balance will tip more toward the ray tracing side. So now let's talk about each of the effects that can be achieved with ray tracing and how they work. Ray trace shadows are easy. We just cast a ray from the surface we're rendering toward the light source. If the ray hits something before it gets to the light, we know that our original location is in shadow. If the ray doesn't hit anything at all, the surface is fully lit. If the light source is a volume, it's a little more complex. We have to cast multiple rays toward the light. If some of the rays reach the light, but others hit objects, the surface is partially in shadow. This results in realistic looking soft shadows. Ray trace shadows are currently used in games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Computing ambient occlusion is sort of like computing shadows, but the whole world is the light source. We cast rays in a hemisphere around the point that we're currently rendering. If all the rays hit nothing, the surface is 0% occluded. If all the rays hit something, the surface is 100% occluded. But if only some of the rays hit something, the surface is partially occluded. Because of the huge number of rays required for this process, this technique usually, usually uses temporal accumulation where a few rays are sent out each frame in random directions and then the results are accumulated over time. To create reflections, an eye vector ray hits an object. At the hit location, we calculate the reflection vector and then cast a ray in that direction. If it hits something, we capture the color at the hit location and that becomes the reflection color. If the surface is rough, the reflection vector becomes a cone and we have to trace multiple rays to represent the cone. The more rough the surface, the wider the cone becomes and the more rays we have to trace. Reflections on rough surfaces are really expensive because of that. We can control this expense with a threshold value where below a specific roughness, we switch to standard rasterized reflections instead of using ray, ray tracing. I'll show how to do this in Unreal in a future video. Ray traced reflections are currently used in games like Battlefield 5. Global illumination calculates how light bounces through the scene. Areas that are not directly lit still receive some light because of the bounces. For every bounce, the light loses some energy and takes on the color of the surface it hits. This is pretty expensive to do with ray tracing. Unreal is currently working on a new system called Lumen for Unreal Engine 5. Lumen will be completely dynamic and calculate global illumination in real time. We'll go into more detail on that system in a future video. Ray traced global illumination is currently used in games such as Metro Exodus. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video and that you have a better understanding of what ray tracing is and how it works. Uh, in next week's video, I'm going to go over what's required to turn on ray tracing in Unreal Engine. And then in future videos, we'll go over each of these techniques, shadows, ambient occlusion, reflections, and global illumination. And for each of these, I'll show you examples and how they work. And then finally, I'll talk about how to optimize performance in ray tracing. So I hope you're looking forward to those videos. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you are and hit the notification bell so, you'll, so that you'll know when new videos come out. I try to release these every Thursday. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.